Hello everyone, the Mongua and the Rio de Janeiro. Greetings from Brazil G20. Today we're in for a G20 that's different. It's fresh, it's energized, and it's delivering for the global south while respecting the interests of our friends in the global north. This year, countries like China, Brazil, and many, many others are stepping up, not just as participants, but as a driving force for G20. They're tackling issues and problems that resonate across borders and reforming a world order that is too often, too often prioritize the privileged few over the billions in the less developed world. To understand why this G20 matters, let's look back at why the G20 was created in the first place. In 1999, financial crises exposed the limits of the G7, a club dominated by Western economies. The world needed a platform for both developed and emerging nations. The African Union, representing 55 African countries, became a permanent member of the G20 in the year 2023. That's great news. Africa ought to be represented in such global bodies. In fact, it's long overdue. Now, the Global South countries account for nearly half of the G20 membership. This year's Rail Summit tackles three themes. Fighting global hunger, reforming an outdated financial architecture, and combating climate change. These are not just talking points. They're action plans to deal with urgent crises. A key deliverable at this year's summit in Rail is the establishment of Global Alliance Against Hunger and Poverty. Right now, 828 million people worldwide are chronically hungry. Think about that. The world produces enough food, but hunger persists due to economic inequality and global divides. China has lifted over 800 million out of poverty, and Brazil's hunger relief program, Fomezelo, has become a global model. Together, these countries show us that hunger can be tackled if governments and G20 make it a priority. When I spoke with Brazilian President Lula, he emphasized just how imbalanced global priorities are. O mundo gastou ano passado 2 trilhões e 400 bilhões de dólares em armas. Se nós tivéssemos gastado esse dinheiro em educação, em alimentação, a gente não teria 733 milhões de pessoas passando fome no planeta Terra como nós temos. Nós não teríamos tanta criança morrendo de fome? Então a minha pergunta é o seguinte, o que não dá é para a gente admitir, sabe, que você tenha quase um bilhão de seres humanos passando fome, enquanto os homens estão se matando com guerra, destruindo o que existe para reconstruir depois. This question couldn't be more relevant. Should the world be channeling resources into human needs or into weapons and war? This brings us to the financial system. It's no secret that the IMF and World Bank often impose harsh conditions on loans, trapping developing countries in cycles of debt. Recently, at the BRICS summit, countries pushed for strengthened role of alternative financial models like the New Development Bank, or NBD. The NBD has approved loans worth 350 billion US dollars to finance over 105 projects directly impacting lives. Listen to what the president of a G20 host had to say about this. Depois a gente quer rediscutir o sistema de Brad Woods. Ou seja, o papel dos bancos financeiros como FMI e Banco Mundial, que hoje eles não são utilizados para favorecer os países de desenvolvimento que precisam de financiamento. São bancos utilizados para sufocar os países pobres. Hoje a África tem uma dívida de 900 bilhões de dólares. O que eles pagam de juro é mais do que eles têm capacidade de investimento no desenvolvimento. And then there's climate change, a crisis felt hardest by the poorest nations. China has pledged carbon neutrality by the year 2060. Brazil's Amazon is the world's lands. India is aiming for 50% of its energy coming from non-fossil fuels by 2030. And then South Africa is transitioning from fossil fuels. Here's the reality. The West is responsible for over half of historical carbon emissions, and yet, who's been asked to pay the price? Countries, they're still working to meet basic needs. This G20 is an opportunity for the global south to push for climate justice. As we look to Rio, the message is clear. A more equitable, inclusive world isn't just possible, it's already taking shape. The G20 in Rio is not just another meeting, it marks the global south taking matters into their own hands to build a fairer world.